Today we've got a special video for you. We are going to be comparing Taylor's newest 700 series Koa guitars with the exclusive that we designed with them, telling you what is exactly the difference and the same between these great satin finish Koa guitars, so stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our spring store link below for custom swag. And check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessionals, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Cooper, the best laid plans, right? So right. <laughs> our idea today was we wanted to show you the difference between a 724 CE, new model from Taylor Guitar featuring all solid Koa construction with select Koa, different voicing and, and so forth, um, and our exclusive K24 CE, which we showed you months back, um, mm -hmm. and we've basically just been without. We just got a new shipment in, because uh, that's how it goes with Koa sometimes. Uh, but we didn't have a 724 to show you today. Why is that, Cooper? Because they're flying off the shelves. Flying, and, and in cases. Um, so they're not damaged, but yeah, uh, you yeah. guys are are buying a lot of them. Uh, they yeah, <laughs> we've we've gone through several shipments worth of yeah. those guitars, and for good reason. They're awesome. We've been able to get 722s more often, so yep. that's what we got today. And this works. So what we want to do is effectively talk about again what review what Taylor's done with the new 700 series guitars that feature all Koa construction. I specify that because there's still a 717 mm -hmm. that is a spruce and rosewood. Um, but also talk about what we did that's, it's kind of similar. In fact, you might look at these two guitars, satin finished all Koa guitars and go, oh yeah, those are basically the same. But there are some key distinctions that both guitars have for particular reasons. Um, in fact, some things that I fought to have uh, with the exclusive guitars that we did. Um, and so we're going to break it down for you. We're going to play these for you as well. They're obviously going to sound different by body size, but the koa that is selected and also the bracing that's going on with these guitars is going to affect the, the tone at the end of the day. So let's start with the 722 CE. So this is the Grand Concert version. Aesthetically, it's going to look exactly like a 724 CE, which is the Grand Auditorium body. So they both share the same aesthetic packages and the same basic design that's going on. It features all solid Koa construction, top, back, and sides with what Taylor's calling select Koa. The way they've described this is basically it's Koa that wouldn't go on a Koa series, wouldn't go on uh, an upgraded Koa series with double A Koa like we have on that, or a builder's edition or anything to that effect. Um, and, and they wanted to have a, a use for it and do something different aesthetically um, and do something different with the bracing so that you have a different tonality compared to what you get out of a Koa series guitar. So it is not as flamey, uh, but it has rather straight grain and nice coloration. By the way, that straightness of grain is something that we've kind of talked about. It's often something that you want to pay attention to when you're looking at tone woods. Something can look crazy good, but if it's kind of all over the place to a point, it, it can become a bad deal. So you want to see flame, but you also want to see some tightness and uniformity, which this has with some great coloration. And there's some, you know, moderate flame. It's got a very cool, do you remember what this is? Is this maple? Maybe, maybe so, I'm not positive. I believe it's stained maple. Uh, they've been using these wood pick guards for a number of years with rosewood or ebony or stained maple. It's very cool, it's thin, it looks great aesthetically, and it complements the satin finish top along with the rosette on this guitar. Um, ebony fingerboard and bridge, as usual, with Italian acrylic, uh, which is, uh, it is Italian acrylic on this guitar, right? I it think is. So. Yeah. yeah, which is, you know, plastic with an accent. Uh, very nice. And, uh, you know, very understated overall. I'm glad that they didn't do like a burst or anything. They're just kind of letting the wood shine through on this guitar. You've got the ES2, a hard shell case, of course, the Taylor logo up top, and some nice, uh, cool looking tuners kind of a, a bronze, smoked bronze look, yeah. which is really nice. So that's what you're gonna get on these 700, uh, 724 and 722 CE model guitars. Very cool. We've got our exclusive. Here. Yeah, we do, which, you know, some of the philosophy you're talking about that we like on that guitar, mm -hmm. a, same thing here, non-stained Koa top. Right. That's the whole point, you know, yeah. it's like. Let the wood shine through. Yeah, and especially, so the tops on these double A Koa as you, uh, 
pointed out, which you can really just tell just by looking at it. I love that you chose not to go with the pit guard, not to go with the stain, even down to just using the wood on the rosette. Yep. And I mean, it's nothing at all takes away from the koa. I think that's the grand idea. Um, and koa is like one of those things I feel like you might buy it for the looks, but then you get incredible sound. Right. It's usually, I feel like in the guitar world, if you're buying it based on the looks, you're making a tonal, you know, unless you love the classics, then that's one thing. But with a crazy flamey wood, might not always be the best sounding. This is fantastic sounding code. Well, because it's flamed, but it's got nice straight grain. You're yeah. not seeing like weird bends all over the place, which you'll see in some like, uh, Sometimes on a tailor that is uh, using laminate wood yeah. or layered wood, mm -hmm. they'll go with that because it's not really affecting the sound and it looks really cool, but that's not what you really want in a solid wood instrument. The crazy part too is, and if you see one of these in person, you can really dive in, seeing the unfinished koa on the inside from the back, which yeah. is also a beautiful, you know, just kind of set of koa. Um, seeing what it looks like before the finishing goes on, you can still pick up some of that flame but then really seeing how the finish, which is the silent satin finish, yeah. which is one of the biggest upgrades. That, that was a big part of it. So th the philosophy behind this guitar was, I really wanted to, and it's what we've done with a, a few of our other uh, exclusive builds with Taylor. I'm a big fan of aesthetically what they did in the past, like the late 90s, the early 2000s with a lot of their inlays and their woods. Not that that's taking anything away. I think they're making some of the best guitars they've ever made. And so the idea is bringing some of those aesthetics and marrying them with the superior build practices that they are employing now. And so in the late 90s, the early 2000s, the koa that they had was incredible looking koa and it was not, there was no stain, there was no burst. Um, now it was gloss finished, yeah. um, but I have <laughs> I have increasingly come to really appreciate satin finishes yeah. um, that they've been doing, particularly once they started doing the builders editions with the silent satin. Because, and I've said this before, to me it's more like an orchestral instrument, and it's really allowing the guitar to resonate because it's such a thin finish. Now, satin finish on this is going to do that. But it's going to be louder. It's very. It's basically the same satin finish you're going to find on the lower priced tailors. They had not up until this point done a single guitar that was not a builder's edition that didn't feature their silent satin finish, and that was a point of contention that we pushed for and we were able to get because I I really feel that that's important because we want to yeah. we want to showcase the beauty of the wood. That's another reason why we kept the pale maple wood bindings. The maple or the maple and is that uh, rosewood? No. There's some koa in there. Koa for sure. rosette. Yeah. Um, I wanted to showcase the wood, and then we also have this callback to this old inlay. Now, this was the inlay that used to be on the koa series. Technically, it's the GA limited inlay, so it debuted before the koa series on limited edition Grand Auditorium guitars, and I've just always found it to be a really beautiful, understated inlay. And and so that was the idea, and and so you've got V class bracing. You've got what I consider probably the best finish Taylor's ever done. Mm -hmm. um, you've got beautiful upgraded flamey koa that harkens back to the koa that you saw in a lot of those older guitars. Mm -hmm. And then we had to go with the best tuners that you can get on the market today. Only way to go. Really. Goto 510s. And you might be saying like, you can always take, you know, replace whatever you want, but these come with them. And, <laughs> That's right. Uh, so yes, you can buy a set of Goto 510s and throw them on whatever tailor you want. And I don't know how much they are. I, last time I bought a set, they were 250 bucks. Yeah. Uh, inflation being what it is, they're probably closer to 300 plus installation, unless you feel handy with a drill on your multi thousand dollar guitar. Yeah, don't do that. I um, mean, I'm fine with it, but yeah. But yeah, this guitar, it's just, you know, I love the 700 series with the abalone on the mm -hmm. rosette, the pit guard. It gives the Koa, it like frames the Koa much differently. Right. Gives it a really interesting look that feels, uh, I mean, I'm going to throw out some words here, feels somewhat aquatic to me. It's kind of really? like a, I it, can see that. it looks tropical to me. It's like, it's like going to the sea world to their little aquarium. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's like it. something special that I think you get out of that aesthetic package that you have not been able to get before. However, I feel like, and I've said this before in our video, the, introducing these, this is to me the love letter to Koa. This is the one that it's really meant to be 
like what can a koa guitar be and what should it be, you could throw as much abalone as you wanted on there and make it presentation style. Right. This is really just getting koa uh, as the star of the show. The sound exemplifies that, the finish exemplifies that, so I dig well, it. And let's talk about the uh, the sound that you're gonna get out of koa because they're both all solid koa guitars. Obviously this is a smaller body, so when we demo it, they're going to sound differently. But with koa, particularly when it's all koa, koa on the back and sides is going to yield you an EQ on the guitar that has a nice lovely mid-range and sparkly high end with some low mid. And over time, it grows on that low mid sound and becomes bassier the more you play it, uh, which is a really nice aspect of koa. When you use koa on the top wood, like with any hardwood, there's a compression factor that comes in because it's not as soft as spruce or cedar. And so you're dampening down those dynamics. That means that you can really lay into it and it becomes nice and round like, an, like a tube amp. Yeah. <clears throat> That's how we've usually described it. The way Taylor has braced the 700 series has also kind of leaned into that a bit, um, almost voicing it more like an all mahogany guitar than an all koa guitar. And then, you know, the bracing on the koa series is what we have on the exclusive, which is more in line with that traditional koa sound. So you get that <clears throat> kind of that transparency and brightness of maple and that mid-range warmth of mahogany with some of the overtones and low end of rose but wood, but not as bassy. And so that's why for many, aesthetically and sound wise, a lot of people are like, it's kind of the perfect package. Yeah. So, you know, if you really like the sound of Koa, then this is going to be like one of the most Koa sounding tailors you're ever going to hear. And if you've wanted a little bit more earthiness out of Koa, more of that kind of mahogany bite, then the way they voice the 700 series kind of leans in that direction. Let's so. hear them. Let's hear Chris jam out on some colors. Let's do it.
So there you have it. A uh, good comparison between what we've done with our exclusive and what Taylor's done with the new 700 series. Both phenomenal guitars, um, but I think it really helps break down <coughs> kind of some of the choices we made, some of the reasons that Taylor is still voicing the Koa series a little bit differently than mm -hmm. the Koa models in the 700 series. One thing that I will say about particularly Flamey Koa that I, I picked up on the other day, I was watching a video online of a group doing this like acoustic set and the camera very quickly kind of passed by the uh, acoustic guitar player kind of sitting on a stool, you know, just really quickly. And in that brief, like, half a second glimpse, I was like, that was an Alcoa Taylor guitar. You Did know, you just see the hologram? Just, 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 saw the <laughs> yeah. just saw the flame and the coloration as it went by real quick. And then la later on, I'm like, I'm pretty sure, right? And yeah. it comes back, I'm like, yep. Yeah, Dead on. And seriously, as you moved your arm, the lights coming down, it literally makes that flame look like a hologram kind of thing. Well, and, I mean, effectively it is. You know, there was someone, someone was talking about, you know, really nice flamed or quilted maple. Having a almost 3D looking look, it is 3D. You're literally looking at the tree doing this, you know, and as you move it around, you get to see, and this, by the way, this is the difference between a veneer mm -hmm. and hardwood. You can always spot a guitar that has a veneer flame maple top or co or whatever versus hardwood. Yeah, because it's flat. There's no depth to it. Whereas on this, you can move it around and you can see the light hit the different parts of the, the grain of the wood. And it's just a beautiful accident of nature. You know, it really is to, to see something like that that was in a tree. Yep. And now it's on a guitar. And it seems somehow Taylor's really the only guitar maker that's got Koa like that. Yeah, right now, you, know, you know, we we've seen some other Koa guitars. Um we had that yeah, you know, uh, old Martin prototype that we had that had some yeah. really nice Koa on really it. Really cool. But comparatively, that was 20 years old. yeah, that was 20 years old and comparatively it's very hard to find uh, a Koa guitar that's built to this kind of level and really has um this this aesthetic of the wood. A lot of it's a lot more plain just because that's what's available. So yeah, it's a real treat to see stuff like this, to be honest. It's almost like trading cards too when we get them in. Everybody wants to open every single one up and pick their favorite. Yeah. So I encourage you, if you want to see them, uh, let us know because we can show you all of them. Yeah, the back and sides are not double A, but it's still so nice. This like very tiny flame, it's almost like a modeled yeah. look, is so 
nice. And again, you've got that that moving 3D effect on it. Yeah. It's just such a beautiful guitar. They came out nice. Um, I feel like we're making this one feel bad, but uh, I mean, it's it is nice. Beautiful. It, it is just beautiful. does. Yeah, it's I mean, a whole flame different flavor. Flame-wise, you know? it's it's not the same, but that's an aesthetic choice. And I do love what they've done with it because it is a really earthy aesthetic yeah. um, that just really hasn't been there. Mahogany tends to be just typically darker with the stain or just so uniform. Yeah. You don't get that coloration and streaking. But yeah, the the caramel color goodness of these guitars is, is pretty great. Yeah. So, fantastic. Yeah, it's nice stuff. So, if you are looking for a Koa guitar, uh, we can uh, get you taken care of. We've got the seven, let's see, Taylor offerings that we have now. There's Koa GS Minis. There's Koa 200 Series. Koa Plus GS Minis as well, a little bit interesting and cool. We have a great selection of GT K21Es, which, yeah. by the way, if you are, this is a little a, a tip, okay? This is insider. Don't tell anybody, okay? If you want some really nice Koa without having to hit the upgrade button, smaller body guitars tend to have nicer Koa because things that would be on the wood along the edges that would have said, nope, that doesn't work for a top can get, you know, they, they don't end up in that same silhouette. And so you can use yeah. that. And so I, I've consistently seen Grand Concert and you know, kind of GS Mini size guitars get incredible wood. Those GTK21s have continually kind of met that mark. Yeah, and I feel like there's a lot of players that, you know, everybody thinks about the Grand Concert, this is the smallest, you know, full-size Taylor, and it's still, they just want something a little bit smaller. I saw it with an 812 the other day. Yeah. A guy was playing it, and he loved it, but he just wanted something slightly smaller, went with a GT811. I feel like you might dig this guitar, you might love a 722. Check out a GTK21 because you probably... I mean, definitely nicer Koa, yeah. but it's just a little more comfortable, little, you know, smaller for somebody that's really looking for a small guitar. They're fantastic. So Koa GS Mini, GS Mini Plus, 200 Series, GTs, 700 Series, the Koa Series, uh, including the GTK21, the Builders Editions, and then really kind of sitting at the top are our, our exclusives, um, which is just, this is going to be the nicest Koa that you're going to find. So. Yep. Pretty sweet. So if you have any questions on any of these guitars, you're wanting to add a Koa guitar to your collection, we've got plenty to choose from. You know what to do. You want to go online to our website, which is? It's going to be alamomusic.com. If you forgot. Glad you're picking up what I'm putting down. Yeah. Um, you know, but you can also come in. You can call us. And you can also chat online. So one of the things Cooper was saying is we get photos of, and, and every one of these is different. So you can you know, contact us, and we can send you options. and you can choose what you want to hang on your wall at home and play to your heart's content. So, you know, but I, I always say at the end of the day, the best guitar in the world it's a double A grade. is a double A grade. <laughs> Just flamey Koa goodness. So that's my opinion, and it's the right one. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. Keep coming back for more, and we'll see you next time.